Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee and welcome to, I guess it's an update on my houseplants. Now, I think the last time you saw these was in summer. Some things have happened, some things for the better, a lot of things maybe for the worst. So I just want to do a nice chilled out walkthrough. I'm going to come in here and talk over them and, you know, dip in, dip out and we'll have some chilled out music on. So we're going to start with this, my goodness, looking back at it on camera is crazy. <laughs> so we're going to start with this massive monster of Deliciosa. There is actually two of these guys. So the one I'm taking you to now is much smaller. And to be fair, it's two leaves. I still have a ratchet strap wound around it from when I transported it in the van. And I've not taken it off because I thought it was very useful. It's not done much, but to be fair, this was a head cutting from like a big monster. So I didn't expect it to do much because obviously it's rooting. But to be fair, it, it looks fantastic, to be honest. So although it's only had one leaf pop out, I'm quite happy with that. I think it looks quite good. It's sort of doing a job of masking off some of the other stuff I have in the kitchen. So at some point it might have to go because this is a lot of large form. This is a lot of large form. Do not recommend. Here is my second large form. And all has gone fantastically, except for at the top here. So what you can probably see is my Cebu Blue Pothos sort of draped over the top of it. I only did this shortly before I filmed because it was sat underneath. So I think, guys, we're going to have to move the Cebu because it's quite clear that we've got to a point with this Monstera that you can't have anything hanging over the top, which is a big shame. But otherwise, the Monstera is doing very well. As I say, that top leaf is the new leaf. Everything else is chill. The cats haven't actually gone at the rest of it, so that's kind of good. Moving on. Oh my goodness. Okay, listen, <laughs> listen. This peace lily is a wreck, okay? It's had consistent underwaterings when it was at the shop. I've brought it here. Still looks like trash. Um, there's a really weird stake in there with like a bit of padding at the top. That's actually when we took it to a show that we went to for Nurture System and I was just trying to keep it okay in the back of the van while still protecting it. And it's still there because this plant has a massive lean on. Um, it, it's healthy enough, really it needs a repot, it needs the roots looked at. It, it needs some work, but otherwise, at the moment, it's just sort of chilling there. And the, the massive Monstera kind of helps prop it up, to be quite honest, so... Eh, it's doing okay. Ooh, we then have one of my favourites. This is Philodendron Plowmanii, the type without the silver. Sometimes it gets the tiniest bit of silver, but in general, it is silver-free. And you know what? I'm really proud of this, but there is something about this plant that is really, really bothering me. So I've repotted this plant mm, twice at least. Okay, I, brought, I put it in a bigger pot. It didn't work out, long story short. I put it in a very long pot, which you will see now. But the damn thing, guys, it's decided to try and grow upwards. Now, this is a crawler. It was crawling when I found it. Um, but it's it's almost, well, I mean, look at it. It's, it's stopped, really. And it's also turned the wrong way. So I think I need to repot it again. But I just really want it to crawl. Like, what, what have I got to do? You know, what have I got to do? So where are we going next? Ah, we're going back up top. So yeah, this is me just showing you again the state of the Cebu Blue. And next to it, we have Anthurium Forgetii that, to be honest, it's not done much. This is dark form, um, looking very dark. It, maybe it needs a bigger pot now, I'm not really sure. I mean, I do have a bigger one of these upstairs, so I could just swap it out for a bigger one. I don't know, guys, I'm really going to have to rearrange all these shelving. But I... I, of course, will take you with me on that. I will film me doing that, but I think this whole thing needs a rearrange. Ah, Anthurium Crystallinum, looking good. Now, this one, last time I updated you on it, it's done nothing at all. But I'm pleased to tell you that it actually has finally done something. After the countless nothingness, the spider mites, and the failed flowers, it has now given me, if you can see it at the very top, it's given me a new leaf. So this probably needs to move quite quickly and I may even cut off the older leaf because you can probably tell I'm going to have to rotate that in order to display it right. So 
I'm debating, debating cutting off the old leaf. But I'll see what happens once I've rearranged it. You know, I'm not going to do anything too quickly. So next to that, we have the wonderful red crystallinum. And I'm pretty sure I'm about to zoom out and show you basically the two different types together because you don't have to have the red, you can just go with the regular. But as you can probably see from the footage, there is quite a big difference. It's it's clear that there is a big difference here. But honestly, you could have either one. I say this all the time on this channel, but the care is absolutely the same. It's no different. So two fantastic plants. We love them. Um, will they live together in the future? We don't know. We don't know. So next we have Anthurium pallidiflorum super narrow, and it has stayed pretty narrow. It hasn't done anything since the weather has cooled down. It's sort of just chilled where it is. But you know what? I'm kind of happy with that. It's in a small pot. I'd like to keep it, you know, small if I can, because that means I get more on my shelves and I kind of get that more jungle look. If everything's in like a massive pot, then you get white pots everywhere, and I don't necessarily want that. I'm now showing you a very squished new leaf that crept out of the red crystal when I was on holiday, so I didn't have time to sort it out, so it's coming all funky. Um, and in front of that, we have, what is it? Oh my goodness. Ginny Galaxy? Begonia Ginny Galaxy? You can probably tell it's, it's got some weird colouring. That's because some of it is variegated and some of it has reverted, but I haven't had the heart to cut it because it sits quite proud. It probably does need a repot. It definitely needs cutting so I can sort of take cuttings of the variegated parts, but I'll, I'll get round to it, guys. <laughs> I'll get round to it. Oh, I'm taking you back down here because I forgot to go back down here. So, right, this next plant, it's done some stuff, guys. So you can see the damage from the cats from way back when, but this Monstera, I, I don't know if you just call it green on green, the green on green is 10 times more vibrant than what it used to be. And I cannot tell you why. Because these weren't new leaves, these, these were already very old leaves, but look at it. Like you can clearly see where the variegation is. But the last time I showed you this plant, you kind of couldn't see it, like I was struggling to be able to show you it properly. So I, I don't know, because if anything it's got darker outside, so I don't know why we're seeing more of it. It's... I don't know, it's, it's a bit weird. What we did get, though, was a new leaf. Um, no telling on what the variegation is like yet, because as you imagine, you, you're not going to see it very much. It's still floppy, but I'm really glad this has something because it's got no roots, basically. Oh, th so this is what I'm most annoyed about. <laughs> and this will crop up a few times. I've got blackening slash, you know, burn or whatever on the leaves, and I don't know what has done it. I would hesitate to say the DIY pest spray, and that is because it's not its not throughout my collection. It's not an obvious thing that's occurred on loads of different plants. This plant's not even getting much sun on it, so maybe it is a watering thing. It's in a weird place for it to be things like nutrients and stuff like that, and I've never had a problem with nutrients ever in the last three years, so I'm not really sure what that's about. Just lifting that up to show you that my Gloriosum does have some growth. It's just hidden very well by the Monstera. But it's it's alright. It's This one's a bit gangly, but I don't know, because it sits well with the other plants, I've just kind of left it the way it is. Maybe I should do something with that. I mean, I'm not mad that it's not growing quickly, because obviously it's a crawler. And I don't really want my crawlers to grow quickly, guys. I'm sure you can all relate. <laughs> crawlers can be a nightmare. Climbers can too, don't get me wrong. But crawlers can be a bit of a nightmare. It looks really good though. Oh, right. Okay, so I'm probably going to pan around this plant a lot because I am so proud of it. This is Philodendron Jose Bono crossed with Tenue. Not sure which way around that is, but can I just... Oh my god, look at it. It's so gorgeous. That is climbing, by the way. But I've mentioned this a lot before. It's such a dense climber. It's very good if you hate poles and you don't love climbing philodendron. This gives such a jungly look without me doing literally anything other than feeding it. Look at it. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but that's really sexy. If you don't like that, I honestly, I don't know what's wrong with you. 
I'm calling it. I actually don't know what's wrong with you. That's beautiful. And it's sizing up so well. Oh. Ah. This here is my Thormatophyllum African Fantasy looking very fantasy. It's leaning a little bit to the left, but that's because I've recently rotated it because you kind of have to with this one. It's still sort of tied at the bottom. I do have a solution for that. I just haven't been able to employ it yet because I'm late catching up on a lot of work. But if you didn't know what these things look like, there's a wonderful shot of the leaf. I just think they look really cool. And don't get me wrong, they're not for everybody, but I think they're really, really good. I love them so much. And to be honest, this is a really nice gap filler for my wall. So I'm pretty happy with that. Oh my God, guys, I'm doing commentary right now. My cat is, he won't leave me alone. Please stop. Please stop, mommy's working. I will never do a video without cat chaos. It's not even the naughty cat. It's not even the naughty cat. Good Lord. Pause guys. I want to jump in here really quick to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, which is Zbiotics. Now I don't know about you, but I really find that with today's modern diet, it makes it really difficult to keep everything in balance. If I'm not cooking completely fresh meals from scratch, I'm almost constantly consuming an excess in sugar and I'm not eating anywhere near as much fiber as I probably should. This is where Zbiotics comes in. The PhD microbiologists over at Zbiotics understand that extra sugar is all but impossible to avoid these days, and 95% of Americans do not get enough fiber. So, they genetically engineered a probiotic to convert some extra sugar from our everyday diet into a prebiotic fiber called Levan. This leads to a more balanced microbiome, the key to a healthy gut. One stick pack of sugar to fiber, and you will get a daily dose of fiber from the foods that you already eat. This delivery of fiber happens slowly throughout the day, which is how your microbiome prefers it. I started drinking sugar to fiber every day because I liked having a way to get closer to my daily fiber target without needing to change my current diet. I love it because it's creating fiber from the excess sugar that I really don't even need in the first place. Sugar to fiber is the newest product from Zbiotics, but they also have a pre-alcohol probiotic available to purchase. This helps with basically rough mornings after drinking. I know, we've been there. We've all been there. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash Kaylee and use Kaylee at the checkout for 15% off any first time orders at Zbiotics. Zbiotics has a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason at all, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Thank you so much to Zbiotics for sponsoring this video. And back to the tour. So here's just, I'm just zooming out so you can get a bit of context as to sort of where we've been and what we've seen. So that's the entire left side of the room. Here is my wonderful begonia something or other. Now I know this was ID'd, but I either can't remember the name that I was given for it, or it's maybe not the thing that it was ID'd as because it doesn't seem to match. I did see one of your comments on a video a couple of weeks back and I, I Googled what I thought it was based on that and it, it's not, so I don't know guys, but you know what, it's doing really well. Uh, yeah, we'll ignore that. <laughs> Basically, it ran out of water while I was on holiday and it's, it's a little bit upset with itself. I won't lie, it's not the happiest it's ever been, but the new growth is beautiful, so I'm not really worried and I probably will propagate this one to be honest because there's enough of it so if anyone's interested in it let me know even though I probably will propagate it anyway because it's, it's a very pretty plant and that's someone that doesn't like begonia. This little guy's not done much this is Anthurium bessii af. I'm probably showing you all the flowers it's had that just that's all that's all he's been up to he's just been giving flowers and I haven't been doing any nighttime shaky shaky activities because as you all know, I'm retired from that. Um, so I've just left him. So he hasn't really given me any new leaves, but I'm, I'm hoping next time he will. But I've, I've semi-ignored him. I won't lie, I've semi-ignored him there just because his frontal leaf looks so nice and he's filling a gap. So I've just sort of let him be. But I'm, I'm hoping he gives us something in the future. Maybe next leaf if we're really lucky. So welcome to my cluster of double, what, philodendron gloriosum variegatum. There is a little bit of crisp, and I'm willing to accept in this situation it could be watering, it could be sunlight, but then again, it hasn't happened with everything. So I'm wondering if some of it's like guttation or something from a plant above that 
um, that Glory Awesome there on the right? I don't know. Because it's, it's just not happening consistently in my collection. So if you've got any theories on what's going on here, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments, guys. As I say, if it was Nutrients, it should be very obvious across my collection. And it's it's just happening so intermittently. But it's, it's growing well, both of them are. I know it's not the easiest to see what's what, but I'm probably going to zoom in and show you the new leaf of the one on the left because it would appear to me, when we get right in there, that we do have some variegation. I can see it on the very tip there, the tip of the leaf. As for the rest of the plant, we don't know, but that is quite clearly variegation, so stay tuned and cross your fingers and hopefully we keep it up because I just want to let one of these things grow out but still remain like variegated. Like I don't really want to have to cut them, to be honest. I might cut one of them, but I'd like one of them to just stay kind of as is, so meh, I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> there's, there's some casualties here and you guys know me, I don't like to make things look better than they are, so I left it this way. So this is Philodendron Mykins. She's very old. She's about, wow, five years old. And I think this is happening, guys. This is an underwatering situation, by the way, because if it was sun, then you'd, it would be more obvious. Um, see, even she's telling me there, like, I don't want to be here, but I think she's running out of water too quickly because she's too big. And when I go and she misses a watering by a couple of days, the effect is it's almost exponential because there's just not enough water in there and it's so thirsty. So maybe I might cut it back. I'm not really sure, but she, she's not the happiest. Um, this is my Queen Anthurium that's a little bit different. As you can probably see by the lobes at the top, they, they are divorced. We love that. Love that for us. Um, so it's not done anything, but I'm okay with it. This probably should move because in my opinion, it's, it's looking a bit floppy. It's not floppy. It's just sort of trying to get to the light. Uh, you couldn't see it. There is a King of Spades next to it uh, that doesn't do anything, probably because it's in the wrong spot. And then, of course, we have the wonderful Philodendron Spiritus Sancti that, to be honest, if I rearrange these shelves, guys, this is probably going to have to live there. I don't think there is another spot on these shelves where he can live because you, I don't know if you can get a sense of how big this plant is, but it, it's not really joking. It's not even fully mature, as you can probably see by the leaves. It probably needs a good repot, to be honest. But it, it's just so big, like, I can't... <laughs> I'm laughing at it now. It's gonna have to stay there. So that's what we've done so far. We've done all of the left, we've done the top right, and I think now we're gonna go down to the bottom right, where I keep... To be honest, it's mainly Monstera down here. All but, like, what, one plant, I think, actually. So this, the one plant that isn't, is Anthurium. Oh my goodness. It's a Clarinervium hybrid anyway. And you know what? This guy, he did well in my cabinet, so I took him out because I just wanted something to break up the Monstera. And he has done beautifully out here. He's just gorgeous. He's not taking any kind of dive. I'm really, really happy with him. And he's, he's distinctive enough for him to not be as boring as a Clarinervium, you know? Uh, he's had a trim there. <laughs> That's very old damage. I think from when I moved him to the house from the unit, I think he got a bit crispy on the bottom. But he's doing really well, to be honest. Behind that, oh no, beforehand, uh, why do I have a feeling I'm going to show you the flower on the top? I might pan to the flower. I might. Am I going to? Am I going to? Yes, I am. So, flower, flower. Um, past that, we will very likely go to my Monstera Mint, or are we going to go to the BMF? What are we doing? Sorry guys, I filmed this this morning and then I went to go and see my pony, and I've come back. So the footage is not clear in my mind. <laughs> so I'm kind of watching this almost for the first time with you. No, I think we're going to go to this BMF down here. Are we? Yes. Monstera Burley Marks Flame, there are two in this pot. No other reason other than, I guess there wasn't enough root mass to pot it at the time. And it saves on space, guys. Pro tip, if you've got young plants and you've taken cuttings and you don't have the space, or you don't have the pots, just get a bigger pot and put your cuttings in and you'll be reet. Oh, there we go. Casualty from the begonia. I bet you're wondering what that was. It's obviously a fallen leaf. It's funny, when I edited that, that really irritated me, but I didn't see it this time. So I think we're now going to go to my mint. And it is one of, let me think about this, 
three Monstera Mints that I have, just because, I, I mean, I don't actually know why. I, I'm not even sure I can tell you why I have three of them. Oh, there we go. Leaf on the BMF, just showing you that, hey, shit is growing here. <laughs> it's not all bad, it's not all bad. I mean, to be fair, I would like to think most people would agree that apart from a few casualties, everything is very luscious and healthy, so... I'm just saying, guys, it's my feed. Shameless plug. It's my feed. It's all my feed. I don't use anything else. <laughs> so anyway, right, now we're eventually at the mint. This has done very well, and it's become more variegated, and I've, I've just got high hopes because I think this might be the best of the three that I have. So if I was going to keep one, this is the one I would keep, to be honest. But it, it's weird. I never... I wouldn't say I hated mint originally, but I didn't love it. I thought it was all right. I bought it into the shop, what, a couple of years ago now. I decided I liked it quite a bit, and now I kind of love it. I do have an owl bowl. Um, it is upstairs, and it's very juvenile. So at some point, I'd like to bring that down and pot it. And you know what? Maybe it might replace a mint, um, since I have three. Maybe it's a bit, you know, maybe it's time to do something else. And, oh my goodness, right. Okay, I'm genuinely so sad about this, guys. I am so... I'm fuming. It, when you see it, some of you will see it already. You will see what I'm talking about. I am fuming because this tie is lovely, but it has what I would call an issue, whereby on one side of the plant, it's throwing out big blocky variegation. That leaf on the bottom left there, that is from the tie. That's not the mint, that's the tie. But can you see it? Yes, you can. Look what it's done. I'm sorry, but look what it's done. And honestly, matter of time. Now, it could be watering. I don't think it's light. I think it would be more obvious. I, you, you never know. This is one of these annoying things with browning. It's not gone super crispy yet, so it's relatively new. It could be a watering thing. But either way, I'm, I'm pretty annoyed about that. I love this thing, and I've done nothing but baby this plant, and look what it's done for me. Look what it gives me in return. Like, honestly, how dare it? I mean, the other leaf is absolutely stunning. I say this before. I've said this before, but it's everything I want from a tie. So it'd be great if it just cut the shit and went back to normal. <laughs> this is my crappy mint on the bottom there. It's very, wow, it's so dark. Why is it so dark? Oh my God. And it's sort of, you won't be able to tell this very well, but it's intermingled with the other mint. I think the leaf I'm showing you there, the floppy one, is from the cutting below, the nice, dark, sexy one. Yeah, it is. And the other mint is above it, which I probably won't spend a lot of time on, I imagine. But there you go. It's growing. It's stable. It's vibing. The variegation has improved, I will say that, because if you can't see from the first two leaves, it was not so good. It was not so good. And I guess it's just a reminder that with Monstera, it's chaotic. You've got to remember that at the end of the day. And it's either going to go for you or against you, and it's, it is almost luck of the draw. That, see, that one there is, it's too variegated for me. Now we've got squeaky bum time, I like to call it. It's a little bit too variegated. And on the other side, see, there's not a lot. So we've almost got like a similar problem to the tie. We don't want this. We don't want these things. So that's probably why the first mint, the, sorry, I can't speak today. The first Monstera mint I showed you is probably going to be the one that I keep. Why is that on a lean? Oh my God, I've never noticed that before. That, that pole is on a lean. Okay, so I've moved this one. This is my Monstera White Monster. And it's good showing you that in this light because you can see the color it comes in. Now it's coming like a yellowy color. That is because there's actually a lot of green in that leaf. Okay, a little bit like the one just touching it on the left there. It will sometimes come in this color because most of that leaf is going to fade down to green, presumably like that one there that I'm touching. So it's just another little demo of White Monster and if it's something for you. Now, not every leaf has gone that green. You probably won't see it on this footage, but I think I've got, I might have a picture on my Instagram, I'm not sure. Not every leaf has done that. Some of the older leaves have persisted with white variegation and it has stayed there. So I don't want to sit here and say like it's a full-on ghost situation, but something weird happens, okay? I don't, I still don't fully understand it, to be honest. That's it in situ. Uh, that's where it normally sits, pointing at the window. And I'm now showing you my wonderful, what is it called? Monstera Deliciosa Brazil Common Form. And it's getting mature, it's looking quite sexy, but there's going to be a moment coming up where I show you this compared to the white monster behind it. 
a little bit unfair because this one is small form, White Monster is large form. But really guys, it's to try and show you the difference in the leaves. I know it's subtle, okay, I know it is, but it is there. This leaf here is, is probably more spider-like, I would say, whereas if you look at the one that I'm trying to show you beneath it, the White Monster's leaf, it's a bit chunkier, where if you look at the fenestrations on this one, there's a lot more gap. And to be honest, the more mature the plant gets, the more that gap is going to be very apparent because it's, it's not really done yet. It's not really done me a solid though, in the way that it's quite nicely coiled itself round the pole. So that's fun, because a keen eye among you will notice that it's also latched onto the pole. So moving it's going to be a bit of a problem. <laughs> so what have I done? I've done nothing at all. I've left it. Maybe I might take a head cutting of it, um, maybe take that for sale and then do something about that. Oh, it looks nice from the back though. Damn, she looked good from the back. You know what I'm saying? Right, okay. Big casualty, this one. This is Spathophyllum Ghost. Very minty, very cutesy. Not very demure. But to be honest, it's not very cutesy right now. And the culprit is right behind it. If you can see that beautiful little grey boy. That's Teddy, by the way, guys. Billy will make an appearance to the left at some point, I think, very briefly in the background. But Teddy likes to chew this. I know he shouldn't. I know it's toxic. Doesn't seem to do anything to him. I don't think he eats it. He just chews it. Um, real shame, because look at that leaf. Look at that leaf. Obviously, the plants had some flowers that have died off. Again, I've left them. I've been very busy. I've been away. All the things. Oh, there's Billy behind in the background there. But it's just... It's a mess. It is an absolute mess. I don't know what I'm going to do to pretty him up. So, for the moment, I just put him right up to the window to... I don't know. I, I guess kind of perk him up a bit? I don't know. But I think I'm probably about to try and talk to Teddy. I wanted... <laughs> I wanted to get some nice footage of him while we're here. And I think I said his name, but he immediately spoke to me and came over to me, so I didn't get a very nice shot of him. I'm gonna say hello now. There we go. Oh God, this cat melts my heart. Look at his little face. Look at his little face. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm supposed to be working here. <laughs> Just, I love my cats, I really do. And Billy will again make a little appearance, but that guy's, kind of encompasses my little mini update tour. So stuff has happened good and bad. If you've got any opinions on the burning and what it might be, let me know. I don't think it's fertilizer or the pest control because I think it would be abundantly obvious throughout the collection and it's just not. And everything has been fed the same, everything has been doused. But there it is, I hope you enjoyed it. And I guess I will love you and leave you. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you very soon. Bye guys.